Should America's judgment be quick or slow? Hmm. First Chronicles chapter 21, I'm going to read a couple of verses here. Uh, the devil tempts David to number the children of Israel. Um, when you start to number things like that, uh, you really kind of aren't trusting the Lord. And David was supposed to trust that the Lord would deliver him. And it didn't matter how many troops he had or how much money he had or whatever else. God would have delivered David. But David listened to the devil and he numbered the children of Israel. That was a mistake. Verse 7, 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 7 says, And God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly, because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. That's a good prayer to have, by the way. Um, if you are, if you've done some dumb things between you and the Lord, um, it's a good thing to say, I have done foolishly. Not try to find blame with somebody else and put your, well, you see it was the situation or this or that, or, you know, I'll put my guilt on to somebody else. No, I have done foolishly. Lord, please forgive my sin. And like I said in another video a while back, we all have our part, uh, our guilt, so to speak, in what has happened to America, what has become of America. Let's continue here. Verse 9, And the Lord spake unto Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Choose thee um, either three years famine, or three months to be destroyed by, before thy foes, while that the sword of thine enemies overtaketh thee, or else... Three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence, in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now therefore advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let me now fall into the hand of the Lord, for very great are his mercies, but let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel seventy thousand men. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it, and as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. All right, so what happened there? God gave David a choice. Three different options, three different things that could happen as a way to punish Israel for David's sin. Um... So, you know, I'm not saying that we have that same kind of an option here today, because we don't, but um, if we did, should the judgment that's coming to America, should it happen rapidly or slow? Should it be a very quick, harsh, boom kind of a judgment, or should it be something that uh, it takes a little while longer? That's the question here. Um, now, I believe that we are in a form of slow judgment already. Uh, Obviously, you know that if you've been around for any length of time. Um, I mean, the, America's a different country than it was 30 years ago. Even 10 years ago, you know. But I'm saying, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, this was a different nation. So we are already in a slow judgment. But I'm saying the actual thing that destroys this country, where America is no more, should that happen quick or should it be slow? That's the question here. Um... I'm going to put up an article here that you can see. It's from uh, Power Magazine, an article, and it says here, um, Expert, 90% of U.S. population could die if a pulse event hits the power grid. And they're basically, if you go into the article and read it, it's saying within one year. Okay, so in other words, within one year, you would have 90% of the population killed off. In just one year. That's pretty bad. Something that people didn't even have. A lot of people didn't even have 100 years ago. Uh, a lot of the cities had power in, in 1924. You know, 100 years ago from today. But a lot of people out the countryside didn't even have electricity. And now 90% of the population would die in America if the power grid was down for, uh, you know, basically a year. That's kind of crazy to think about, isn't it? And um, I'll put up another... Uh, thing here this is um, Yahoo Finance and it says here 
uh, according to the Fed's 2022 Economic Well-Being of U.S. Households survey released last Monday, 37% of Americans lack enough money to cover a $400 emergency expense, up 5% from 32% in 2021 and back to 2019 levels. Okay, think about that. 37% of Americans lack enough money to cover a $400 emergency expense. That's not good. Okay, and that's an old statistic. I think it's probably a lot higher right now. Um, people don't have any money. People don't have any ability to survive. That's a problem. Okay, America is in very serious danger right now. Um, and... Uh, as far as the thing of judgment is concerned, I'm going to read here 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 31 through 32. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Um, the whole concept of Christianity is self-judgment. You judge yourself, and then you can judge other people. You get your life cleaned up first. And... Um, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, but I think it's an important tangent. And that is, I believe that uh, me personally, you say, what's your opinion, Brian? America should be judged quick or slow. Honestly, uh, it's kind of like the old Band-Aid thing, you know? You have a Band-Aid on your arm or some other place. And you know it's going to hurt to rip it off. But you know you need to take off that Band-Aid. What do you do? Just slowly kind of peel it off and ah, ah, ah. Or do you just go and yank it off quick? Well, I'm usually of the, you know, rip it off quick mindset. You can see these uh, choke cherries here on the trees. So you can look behind me there and see all these choke cherries here. All up on the tree there. They're okay for different recipes, but you have to cook them to get rid of the, they have a real high, um, oh, I can't think of it right now it's not tallow oh, oh I can't think of it pectin okay that's what it is real high pectin content and they get kind of a you know waxy flavor but um, but I'd like to see the judgment of God come upon this country very quickly um, yes it might be painful and I'm not guaranteed that I would survive it or anything but I just don't really want to see, you know, famine coming in and crime increasing and, and it just gets worse and worse. I think it'd be good to just see some really harsh judgment happen very fast, in all honesty. Um, a lot of people are upset, you know, well, what would happen if, um, if we would have uh, America come back to, a, you know, be, become a third world country, not come back to a third world country, but... What would happen if, if America would be a third world country? What would we ever do? Well, I've been in third world countries and in many ways they're freer. Um, the police aren't going to give you a hard time about every little infraction. I remember being in Honduras and I'd see many years ago and I'd see these guys driving down the road, you know, 15 people in the back of a, a Toyota pickup truck or something, you know, and the, the front end's kind of coming off the ground as they're going down the road. And, uh, people hanging on the bumper, people sitting on the sides, and, and I mean, just, you know, what would be considered dangerous. But you accept danger in a third world country. It's just part of life. But here in America, everything's regulated so much and taxed into oblivion and everything else. Not fun. Um, and honestly, I believe that we need to all start to declare our independence from this government. And certainly pay taxes and whatever else. Um, yeah, sure. But uh, it's a dangerous thing to just simply um, rely on the government for everything. You can't do that. And if we're going to go back to having any kind of freedom at all, it's going to have to be that we are not governable. That, um, how can I say that? Uh, it's not that we are lawless people and disobedient and whatever else. That's not the issue. It's just that we, the secular government has to know that as Christians, we, are, we just are not going to submit to certain things. 
Um, there will never come a point in time when I will give in my firearms. I don't care what laws they pass. There will never come a point in time when I will not preach the gospel. I don't care what laws they pass. They get into this Noahide law stuff and whatever, which I am studying right now. I'll be bringing out some stuff on that in the future. Um, oh, we're going to make it that uh, it's blasphemy to say that Jesus is God or some kind of thing like this or whatever else. No, no, sorry. That's unacceptable. Um, God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. Um, the, this is not supposed to be a land of uh, Jewish utopia or something like this where they can come over and they can make everybody, a, you know, submit to the uh, standards of a bunch of satanic rabbis that, that hate Jesus Christ. Um, you can go to hell, quite frankly. Um, I really don't care one bit about what a Jewish rabbi that rejects Jesus has to say. I really don't. Um, you're rejecting Jesus, you are rejecting God. Simple. I am not in the least bit anti-Semitic, but uh, when you come to a bunch of, you know, Kabbalah practicing uh, Jewish rabbis that are involved in perversion and everything, just like their counterparts in the Catholic Church, um, you're not going to get very far with me. Uh, not very far at all. But um, I'm going to be independent. I do what the Lord tells me to do with my life. Uh, I'm a good, uh, honest man, a good citizen, so to speak. Like I said, I pay my taxes and whatever else. But um, to say that I'm just going to submit myself to whatever whim these devils in Congress and the different governmental positions right now, they'll tell me what to do and I'll follow. No, I won't. Um, so just wanted to put that video out there. Uh, I think that we need to be praying. I've started to fly a flag at my office called an appeal to heaven. It was one of the original Revolutionary War flags. And that's what it has to be. Not an appeal to the Constitution or let's bring make America great again. To, you know, from a liberal city boy actor. Uh, that brought in some of the worst tyranny to America. Um, no. Luther! <whistles> Come on, boy! I don't trust Trump, and I never will. I have to get my dog back here before he goes out onto the road. People like to drive real fast on this road. Luther! Come! <whistles> Come on, boy! Luther, Come! His hearing works sometimes and other times it doesn't. <laughs> when, his, when his mind says to shut off his hearing and it doesn't work. But um, uh, it doesn't matter to me who they put in office. Um, I take my orders from the Lord. God gave me this land and uh, this land is his land. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And um, he'll tell me what to do on my land. And he'll tell me what Bible to read and everything else. Luther, come! Here he comes, finally. Uh, apologize about that. Uh, it's not exactly a uh, studio type of sermon where I have everything all controlled and whatever else. Um, it's just kind of like you're walking here beside me through the woods. And uh, I know a lot of you like it, so that's why I continue. But, um, brethren, we have to get independent of the government. We really do. Um, I'm not voting. I will never vote again unless the country completely changes or something like that. But we are not given a real choice. And I don't care what anybody says. Oh, the lesser of two evils and everything. It's still evil. You're still saying that you're going along with sin. You, you know, well, I know Donald Trump has his issues. Okay, then why are you voting for him? Um, What's well, better than Kamala Harris? Is it really? I doubt that. Well, whatever. People will not be persuaded. Uh, well, that's your problem. Um, it's not part of the process here in America. We haven't been given a, a real choice in voting for many centuries. And uh, so... Um, 
But let me know what you think about some of these uh, videos. I've just done three of them here and uh, with notes written out that I carry on a little clipboard. That way I can put more scriptures into this thing. Problem with my little pocket New Testament is it's a pocket New Testament. It's not the whole Bible. So certain passages of scripture I can't exactly quote uh, because if they're Old Testament, it has Psalms and Proverbs, but anything beyond that I can't quote from. So I just thought I would try something a little bit different today. And um, like I said, you can let me know what you think, but I just feel a very strong burden here about the thing of America's judgment. I mean, right now the stock market's not doing very well. We're on the brink of door, or the, we're on the brink of uh, World War III. Um, you know, things are getting really nuts. I'll show you these interesting mushrooms here. You can see those? Pretty interesting. It might be a lobster tail mushroom or something, I think that they might be called. I'm not sure. But, um, but anyhow, I'll quit for now because I need to get some other work done here at the property. Um, so that will be it. And I uh, thank you very much for watching. See you in upcoming videos.